Fire managers and incident management teams need to make quick decisions under extremely complex conditions. They need to know where to direct firefighting resources and make decisions around alerting and protecting the community. The Fire Impact and Risk Evaluation Decision Support Tool, or Fire DST, is part of the Bushfire CRC suite of projects. The project will run for three years and is a multi-agency project. Let's hear more about the project from Bob Checkett from Geoscience Australia, who is the project leader. So Bob, can you explain the, uh, the background and application of the Fire DST project? Yes, uh, David, the, um, the 2009 Victorian Fires Royal Commission indicated the need for a, uh, a tool to be developed that uh, addressed uh, the potential uh, fire impacts, particularly for the extreme cases, on communities. And we're attempting to fill that void by um, putting together a research team, which consists of people from uh, Geoscience Australia, Melbourne University, two divisions of uh, CSIRO and the Bureau of Meteorology. The tool will actually um, simulate uh, these extreme events and um, both for applications in sort of immediate threat for response, but also to understand the potential risk to communities from extreme fire events. So we're, we're looking to, to basically provide a, an information base for land managers and, and fire managers to make decisions at the local, regional, and also national scale. Gee, it's complex, isn't it? There's a lot in it. Um, so, so, Bob, when do you think that the tool would be available for use by the fire agencies? We're un undertaking a three-year development of the tool, uh, basically by validating against the number of uh, significant uh, fire uh, situations that have occurred over the, the last decade, including the 2009 Victorian fires. The development will look at, uh, obviously, extreme weather conditions, uh, vegetation, uh, fire spread, and also um, the impact of smoke on on the community and, and, and health. That will basically uh, deliver a prototype um, computational tool at the end of a three year period that we can then work with uh, agencies and, uh, and land managers uh, to, to develop into an operational sense. Ian, you're responsible for the model integration and exposure definition for the project. What exactly does that involve? Yes, David, my role in the project is to bring together all the information and models uh, into an integrated bushfire simulation system. What we have is information on the vegetation, the terrain, the weather, and we also include information on um, the assets most at risk in a bushfire, that is the people, and uh, what their likely responses are to be. We also have information on the buildings and uh, the infrastructure as well. How do you plan to use fire DST to obtain knowledge to actually uh, to be used by the fire agencies in understanding risk that might be uh, impacting the community. As you know, David, uh, large bushfires are unpredictable and complex. What we have to do with fire DST is to vary the input conditions, uh, the temperature, the vegetation, the wind, and uh, run a whole series of simulations that can give us an idea of how that fire will progress over time. We are looking also at the extreme end of the bushfires so that we'll be able to um, examine the impact on communities and um, their local environment. Jeff, the uh, Bureau of Meteorology does a great job in providing uh, weather forecasting for the Australian community 24-7. How will the Fire DST project impact the way that you provide your services? David, the Bureau has a new numerical weather prediction system called ACCESS, which is a big advance on what we used to use. It's based on better technology. And um, for the FIRE DST project, we plan to configure that to run at extremely high resolution because we want to be able to understand the fine details of the winds, the temperature and humidity over really rugged terrain, such as we saw in some of the Black Saturday fires. So when we've configured that to run at this very high resolution, we're going to um, validate the results, of course, against observations. And we're going to use the results in conjunction with our project partners to understand, better understand the fire spread and what happened on Black Saturday. Kevin, your fire spread model, uh, Phoenix Rapid Fire, is the so-called engine of the, uh, of the fire DST. Can you tell me how this work or the work of the project will improve Phoenix Rapid Fire? Well, what we're planning to do now, I guess it's following on from seven years of work that we've done in the previous CRC, we, we recognise that there's a, an essential third dimension to the fire behaviour that we need to capture, which is the 
the conviction side of things to help drive the spotting process to make it quite realistic and to also uh, give us a better uh, indication of the strength of indraft winds that would uh, help uh, destroy houses, for example. So we saw that as really important in, in um, Black Saturday, but we know it's, it's always been a problem. So what we're going to do is basically incorporate the much better weather forecast information that we're getting uh, and capture that in a, a fire characterization model. So uh, we're going to uh, use that to, to get better correlations with potential house loss impact on uh, critical infrastructure and the like. So the other thing we're going to do is make our suppression modeling much more realistic so we can get a better idea of what the costs and the potential to, to mitigate those impacts of fire in the landscape would be. So the, uh, the model will become uh, much more realistic and we can then rely on it for a lot of the cost benefit analysis that we need to do as part of this uh, fire DST project. So Kevin, tell me about the current use of Phoenix Rapid Fire within the Australian Fire Agencies. The model that we've uh, created is now being used operationally in Victoria. So every time a fire is reported, a wildfire, the uh, simulation is run automatically and within one or two minutes, there's an indication of the likely extent of the fire for the next six hours. Justin, the CSIRO has done a significant amount of work to understand how buildings uh, respond to um, the different elements in a bushfire situation. So really for the layman, what it really means is that you can, you can actually predict how a structure might react in, in a given scenario with it being impinged by fire. That's right. So it's a, the probability that a particular structure might burn down and, uh, and also the collection of structures and how the structures impact on each other during that scene as well. And how do you tackle such a, a complex inter interface problem? How do you actually break it down so that you can properly understand it? Because all of the elements actually interact in a very um, uh, physical way um, and the, the objects' orientations and exposures to each other are very important, we actually uh, put the entire urban scene into a 3D environment where we map it out. So it's like a walkthrough scene, like in a video game or a scenario like that. Once we have that scene, we actually can run physical simulations within the scene that mimic the way real bushfires move up and impact the various elements. For instance, wind direction and uh, fire weather intensity. And we create a bushfire front um, that is driven by those weather conditions. And so really we're watching the scene and watching all the elements react in real time um, and playing out to an eventual outcome, which is either the house burns down or it doesn't burn down. Mick, I understand you're developing the smoke plume modelling for the Fire DST project. So can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, sure, David. There's two areas we want to look at here. One's um, looking at the health risk from smoke at ground level. But the second thing we want to look at is reduced visibility from smoke and the risks from that. Mick, how are your modelling efforts being compared with laboratory and field measurements? To test the, the, the model, that the models work, of course, we need to compare model predictions with actual measurements. We'll be doing two classes of those. One's looking at predictions against ground-based observations. The largest area of uncertainty in the model that we expect to find and we need to work on is uh, how high the plumes go. The other area that we need to do some work on is looking at the emission rates of the smoke compounds that we'll be doing in a wind tunnel designed for fires called the CSIRO Pyrotron. That should give us the information that we need to both predict the rates of emissions and, uh, and their dispersion. You've now heard how Fire DST will integrate components to deliver what-if scenarios. At the conclusion of the three-year project, end users will evaluate the prototype and it's anticipated that the prototype will trigger development of a more advanced operational tool. In the meantime, progressive improvements will be made to enhance existing fire spread models. It is hoped that Fire DST will also promote the development of new IT-based tools to assist in communicating vulnerability to communities. Fire DST, in the end, is really all about giving incident managers and incident management teams the tools they need to better protect the community.